Yes, sir. All right. First question going to come from Kendra Douglas. Hey, Darren. Question um, for you. Looking into COVID, it's been a crazy year so far. Um, what have you taken away? Has it affected you personally? Has it affected your life personally? And because of how different this season is, do you think that it's actually made you guys fight a little harder this year? Um, I think uh, the major way COVID affected me was it, it made me miss two games, and I feel like it was two crucial games of the season. One, the ending, the last game of the season, you know, was still a lot left to play for for myself and for my team. And then also missing the first playoff game. So I say that's the only way it affected me. Like physically, it didn't affect me though. And just like, yeah, like it's, it's been um, a different type of season because you have to be more committed to your team, you know what I'm saying? Because one person can hurt a lot of other people just as far as testing positive and close contact. And, you know, so you just have to do things different. You have to move a certain way. So I say that's the uh, that, that's a major plus with our team. We've been so, you know, disciplined. Uh, you know, we have had a couple hiccups, but I mean, that's going to happen. You know, only you know, we don't even know where it come from. But other than that, man, I feel like we did a great job all season. All right, now we're going to go over to Amy Just. Hey, Devin. Um, uh, long time no chat. Um, two things. Uh, what was the horse's name from the video that you posted yesterday? And then um, how do you feel that you've elevated? I know it's always horse questions with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, and how do you feel you've elevated your game over the past two seasons? I don't know. that I was riding yesterday? Her name is Artistic Dream. Um, she's currently in foal to my stallion, the Django. Um, but over the uh, past last year, the way I feel like I elevated my game is, you know, I just feel like I became even more dynamic on the field, whether, you know, it's leadership, making plays. I feel like I just took it a whole nother step. Like I, like a lot of my things was game changing plays, being able to take over games, being over to being able to set the tempo for the defense or well, for the whole team. And I feel like that was the major part of my game. And that just and that's really just come from all heart. But I, I mean, I worked on a lot of things. You know, I worked on um, play recognition, et cetera. So, I mean, I feel like it's still ways that I can improve as well. But I mean, I feel like uh, those are some of the key components that I worked on this offseason. And next we'll go over to Amber Billups. Hey, Devin, Amber here with Dallas Morning News. How do you uh, game plan to face on one of the most talented offenses uh, with all that speed? Uh, you hire a guy like Ty Bowles. <laughs> ha, that's his job. But I feel like he did. I feel like Ty Bowles put together a great game plan for this week. I mean, if you go watch the uh, first game when we played the Chiefs and they jumped out on us 20 to 23 at halftime or 20 to 7 at halftime, and then coming out of the halftime, we only gave up one touchdown. He flipped the switch and he went back to the drawing board. He seen how they was attacking us and he implemented things for us to do. And now, you know, having a whole week, the game plan and having he done played them already. I think the game plan is even more intrigued for this upcoming game. So I feel like, you know, Ty Bowl, I mean, he the key to everything, you know, Ty Bowl. All right, next we'll go over to Liam Fox of Sportsnet. Hey, Devin. Uh, between you and Levante, what are the specific benefits of having two highly skilled linebackers lined up side by side within this defense? Oh, um, man, that's a good question. I think I think the uh, what we benefit most is just having two leaders. You know, you always got the alpha dog in the middle, but being able to have two alpha dogs in the middle is constant leadership, is constant playmaking ability. You know, we both are basically coaches out there because we know the defense throughout. You know, we know the entire defense, so we can help different people. And you know, you don't just have everybody trying to depend on that one guy. And I mean, I don't know, man. I think it's uh, it's, it's great having him out there, man, especially. You know, with him being a year nine, him being older, him being, you know, being being able to do this a long time and just bring his mindset, let alone with his skill set, and help me uh, thrive as a young player. All right, now we'll go to Jeff Duncan. Hey, Devin, uh, Webster Parish question for you. Uh, how proud are you? 
to be playing in a game with with a fellow Webster Parish product and Legarius Sneed. How well do you know him? And um, how proud is the whole community of, of you guys being in this game? Uh, first and foremost, I'm very proud to be playing against uh, Legarius Sneed. Me and him, we grew up together, you know, playing seven on seven AU, you know, junior high rivals, high school rivals, just living 15 minutes up the street from one another, training together, going to camps together, trying to get scholarships. Um, so I feel like we got a great bond. We always talked, even when I was at LSU, he was at Louisiana Tech. We always kept in contact. We always linked up. And I think as far as for our communities, man, that's really big because, you know, we from small areas and not too many people make it out, let alone us making it out and being productive for our teams that's playing on the highest stage. That's really a blessing. And I mean, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't want to have it no other way. And like looking on Facebook and stuff, seeing all the towns rallying together, getting shirts with both our pictures on there, just, you know, everlasting support, the schools back home, having like Kansas City Day, uh, Tampa Bay Day, LSU Day, Louisiana Tech Day, um, Horse Day, Cowboy Day, you know, just supporting us in many ways, man. It's, it's such a blessing. But at the end of the day, you know, all my communication has been cut off with uh, Sneed for a little minute now because he's a rival right now. And, you know, until this game over, then, you know, we beef him right now. We'll go to Amy Just. All right. Uh... What, if anything, um, do you keep in mind um, from the teaching that you had with uh, Coach Aranda at LSU? I'm sure there's a lot. But oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see, like, the main thing from Coach Aranda is just that, that he taught me is just a way to watch film, properly watch film as if I was a defensive coordinator such as himself and how to always break down my game just to elevate me, you know what I'm saying? Just to make me continue to get better and always improve on myself because, you know, when you're looking to be a great a great uh, player in the NFL, a great teammate, it always starts with yourself, you know, being able to look at yourself and critique yourself. And I think that was one thing that me and him, we always did. I was very uh, – I always came in and critiqued myself and then I always asked for his – for him to critique me and I kind of looked at both sides and kind of compared them together. But other than that, man, another good thing is me and Coach Aranda still keep in touch to this day. And, uh, you know, I'm excited for him to see what he can do with the program he had uh, at Baylor. And, you know, he always, you know, telling me that I could be the best in the league. You know, he coached me. He coached Bobby Wagner. He coached Patrick Queen. So, he, I mean, he got an eye for talent. And he know, and I'm, and I'm just instead of trying to thrive and instead of trying to go upward. And uh, I appreciate a guy like him for, you know, having me at LSU and still sticking by my side, even though he's not at LSU anymore. All right, now we'll go over to Josh Padilla. Hey, Devin. Uh, this is Josh Padilla at Middle Tennessee State University. Um, Mike Caldwell, your, your inside linebackers coach, is, is one of the best Blue Raiders to ever put on the uniform here. Um, what, have, what has he meant to you in your career the past couple of seasons? Uh, coach Caldwell, out of all the coaches I ever played for, he's been the most meaningful and most impactful coach that I ever had. And – Man, it all starts with, you know, him being, him being a student of, of the game because Coach Caldwell played 11 years in the league and he's been in every situation and he's been a great player. And that was this my first time ever having a player, a, a coach to coach me that has also played the game. I never had the type of, uh, you know, that type of coach, you know, player interaction before. And I'm so, I'm so thankful for it. And, you know, he bring a lot, man. I swear we get better every day when we walk up on the practice field and we always text out the game and I say, coach, I got to get better at zone dropping. You know, I feel like is you know, it's killing me, but cause I never been a zone drop. I always been a man to man type of linebacker, you know, chasing people or blixing. And if you look at my zone dropping now, I'm playing extremely well. I'm doing extremely well. I'm reading routes. I'm understanding uh, route concepts and a lot of stuff. And that's just all thanks to him. Cause he, he don't mind putting in the time with you. Because if you want to be great, he's going to help push you there. You know, you got some people, when it's time to get out the building, they're ready to get out the building. But Coach Caldwell, he's willing to go above and beyond just to help me be be the greatest. And, you know, I have desire to be the greatest. So, I mean, look, he's going to help me put the work in. So, I'm really appreciative of him, and I'm really uh, thankful that he's my coach. All right, next we will go over to Kerry Burns. 
Hey, so Carrie Burns actually from the AAU, you referenced it earlier. Can you tell us a little bit about what are some of those lessons you learned while playing AAU that still you carry with you in the NFL today? Uh, I, I say the biggest thing was, you know, brotherhood, you know, being playing AAU like for a long time growing up, you was always traveling with those guys and, you know, you had to depend on those guys, especially for the game or just being in a new city. And I say that's the number one thing because when you, when you um, on a pro level, any level, you know, I think that's the most important thing is having that brotherhood, being able to have that trust in, in the guy next to you to be able to make the player do his job, man. Man, that's something I take with me and I never cherish it because not too many people get to play on the on the levels that I have played on. And so I take advantage, like when I was in college, I took advantage of all those guys because, you know, never know why I might need those guys or you never know what type of impact I may have on their life or they might have on my life. So, I mean, I just try to uh, take it to the heart and I, uh, and I roll with it. All right, next we'll go over to Ron Higgins. Yeah, Devin, Ron Higgins, Tiger Rag Magazine in Baton Rouge. Uh, you never figure you're going to get to the Super Bowl this quick, but what part of this year did you kind of believe, like, I think we've really got a shot? I mean, was, was there a certain game or that part of the year that you thought, we really got a shot? Um, For me, it clicked last year and more so over the summer. I, we had a great defense last year. If you go look at the numbers, you know, top five defense, number one rushing defense, secondary was extremely young. I was young myself, and I uh, told – I basically uh, talked to Coach B.A., talked to Ty Bowles, and I said, if we can get this defense back, we're going to be the reason why we win it all next year. Like, And that was just my mindset going into the season. And it was even before we uh, required Tom Brady, it was like, you know, whatever we have to do, we're going to be the we're gonna be the reason that we get over the hump, get into the playoffs and make a run and get to the Super Bowl. And the thought was always, especially when we knew Super Bowl 55 was in our own home stadium, that was always the goal is just – you know, take care of our backyard, defend our backyard. But um, just us requiring all our defensive pieces back, we brought everybody back that was here last year that made an uh, impact on the team. And, and if you go watch the playoffs, you go watch a lot of games, you, you tell me what the defense was doing. And you tell me if the defense wanted the main reason why we playing in the uh, Super Bowl 55. All right, now we'll go over to Casey Hudson. Hey, Devin. I know that you and Levante get a lot of credit for feeding off of each other uh, out there and on the field and stuff, but what have you seen out of Shaq and JPP and how they've been feeding off one another in the past couple of games? Yeah. I mean, those guys been going at it all year. You know, for them, it's all about, like, I know for his, they don't like taking plays off. You know, they're two of the uh, outside linebackers that they lead in uh, tackles. They lead in uh, snaps played even though, you know, they probably should go take a break so they could be a little fresher on third down. But it just shows the commitment to the team and, you know, want to be available for every down because every down is a crucial down. They just not worried about sacks. But I feel like they elevate each other's game because they always in competition, just like me and Levante. You know, you're going to compete with the person that play the same position as you. And it's just, it's just human nature. It's just that, you know, some guys got that competitive nature in them. And I'm glad those two guys are on my team because, man, they make a tremendous difference for this defense. All right, now we'll go over to Jose Gabriel Gomez. Hi, uh, As you know, uh, you and Levante have been great partners the last two seasons. How you learn to work with him and and what you learn from him? What lessons? How to play the game? How to be a professional? How does little things help you to be the best of the duo this year? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great working with him. Uh, I mean, I learned a lot from him. I'll start with off the field. I know that his main thing was, you know, just having a certain routine to keep your body in order and keep your body healthy because the best of ability, a best of uh, ability is availability. And that was the main thing that he always preached to me. And, you know, he'd been playing the game at a high level for, you know, last year was eight years and now it's nine years. And I mean, that was the main thing that I took away from him. But another thing is just us always talking, us always, uh, you know, me asking questions about what he's seeing on the field. Why do he see certain things like that? And that just helped me play faster, whether it's in a run game, in a pass game. But, I mean, other than that, you know, just being a student of the game, I already had the attribute, you know, for his athletic skill set 
And it now we're just taking it to another level for his mindset. And I feel like he helped, well, he's still helping me mold until like one of the have one of the great mindsets in the game because as a linebacker, that's a key component is to be able to outsmart everybody. And you know, I'm a very smart young man, but you got to be football smart, you know. And for him to be playing at the NFL level for a long time, obviously he way more football smart than me. So I'm just trying to take bits and pieces to catch up with him. All right, now over to Steve Weiss from the NFL Network. Hey, Devin, that's a great jumping off point talking about how smart you are. Um, Kansas City, all the pre-snap eye candy, and then even some of the stuff they do to try to, you know, get you off your keys, you know, Kelsey going underneath on certain blocks and stuff like that. How disciplined do you have to be to try to recognize some of their tendencies? Uh, you got to be very disciplined, uh, especially with those guys. Like you said, they do a lot of – they do a lot of uh, – they do a lot of eye candy stuff, but at the end of the day, they just do it to create a certain formation that they run certain plays out of. And, you know, us having playing those guys already, we got like a lot of film on them, you know, especially then this being the last game and teams going to do what they do right now. So I think a lot of things for us is just uh, studying the notes and the tips and watching the clips that our coaches gave us thus far. I think that's going to help a lot of people. But I mean, I feel like I know them pretty well. Just, you know, playing the first game, watching film that, is, that my coach put in my hot folder on my iPad. And, you know, I feel like it's helping. It's going to help tremendously. And next thing you know, just the playmaking, playmaking ability got to take over. All right, next we'll go over to Ben Bowling. Hey, Devin, uh, congrats on, on reaching the Super Bowl. Um, I, I heard you answer uh, two Two questions ago about someone who helped you um, teach you a lot about the game, uh, but I missed the question. Were you, were you talking about Tom Brady there or someone else? No, nah, I want to talk about no Tom Brady. So, so I'm curious, uh, have you been able to tap into Tom's brain um, to help, you know, learn what quarterbacks are looking for? Has has he helped you uh, on the defensive side? of it? Yeah, I, I talked to him a little bit, but he told me to uh, always keep everything uh, G12 classified between me and him. But, no, nah, he helped a lot, though. Uh, he, he's always an extra coach. You know, he's been doing it for a long time. He know tendencies. He know a lot of quarterbacks over this league. He know what they like to do. And, you know, he's, you know, just showed me little bits and pieces here and there. But at the end of the day, he played offense. I played defense. So, I mean, it's a lot of stuff I had to learn on my own or learn through my guy. All right, now we'll go over to Jeff Duncan. Wanted to follow up with you on Legarius Sneed. Uh, you mentioned growing up playing against him uh, all those years. What He traveled a different path than you did uh, to the NFL. Obviously, he wasn't as highly recruited, high profile. But what kind of player was he back then? What, was he a good basketball player with a great athlete? Did you see this kind of potential in him when you went against him? Yeah, I always knew Sneed was going pro. You know what I'm saying? I always thought he was a first rounder and I could be biased because we close, but he, he but I'm not biased because he had the skill set. Um, growing up, man, when we play uh, football, like when I had an off week or we played on like a Thursday or something, anytime in high school, I always went to his game to watch him play. And man, he was a crazy good wide receiver. Like he, he used to do everything. Like he used to score a lot of touchdowns for his team. Um, he was just a playmaker. He played defense as well. He played safety in high school, and he was a ball hawk. And just as far as basketball, man, he was one of the main guys on their team. And I like I was one of the main guys on my team, so we always went head to head and everything. But uh, I don't feel like he took a bad route. He went to a great school, a school right up the street from where we from, Louisiana Tech. They put out great players, and he was a star for them. He made a lot of plays for them. I, to this day, I don't understand how he – was able to fall to the third round. So Kansas City got a steal because, man, he was first round talent. He tested well, his tape was well. You know, I know he got football IQ, so what more do you ask for in a player? You know, cause they didn't have first round talent come out of that school. But I mean, he's a guy that uh, he didn't complain, you know, first round, second round, third round. When he, we always talk, when you get your opportunity, you make the best of it. And as soon as, um, I think somebody had got hurt for their team and he started the first game and he and he's still starting. Like the person came back and they still got him out there. They still finding ways to put him in position to make plays because that's what he is, a playmaker. All right, next we'll go over to Liam Fox. 
Hey, I, I know it's not a one-on-one -on -one matchup by any means, but uh, what do you think about matching up with Travis Kelsey in the past game? And is there anything you can learn from, you know, the game you had against him earlier in the season? Um, yeah, we're going to put Levante on him. Yeah, it's not, we're going to let Levante handle him. You know, I'm, I'm more so, uh, go with the backs, cover the backs. Levante more so cover the, uh, cover the tight end. So it really won't be a matchup. I might catch him in zone or something. And I know, I know, I know what type of routes he like to run. I know, I know all the route comes sales from the formations and where he aligned gives a lot. So, I, I mean, if he ever in my zone, I'll be ready. But nine times out of 10 for us, one-on-one -on -one matchups and man, it won't be me. All right, next we will go over to Matt Matera. Hey, Devin, you had nine sacks on the season. That was just a half a sack behind the team lead for the Bucs. How much have you enjoyed getting to uh, get after the, the passer this year, getting to play a little more aggressive and, and racking up the sack number? And uh, do you think that best suits your, your skill set that you have here? Uh, I mean, it's always fun when you can go uh, take the quarterback down. As everybody, ultimate dream is to take the quarterback down and get up and celebrate. But, I mean, I, I told uh, Coach Boyles last uh, in the offseason that I felt like he needed to use me a lot more than what he did last year. And that was just a simple fact that my game is all around. Like, some games he might, like, say, for instance, the Packers game, I didn't blitz not one time. But he needed me more in coverage and to do other things. And I'm a team player, so I was able to do that, and my skill set allows me to do that. So at the end of the day, when my numbers call, I just know I need to be screaming like a bat out of hell to get there because it might not get called again. So that's why every time people see me rush the passer, I do it at a, such a high rate because my opportunities are limit, limited with having two great pass rushes on both sides and having guys in the middle that can get after the passer. Last game, we didn't need to do nothing but – let the front four get after Aaron Rodgers and it worked. This game, it might work. This game, I might have to go. This game, Levante might have to go. We just never know. It's always when you get into the floor of the game. But at the end of the day, I think uh, everything works for me because, you know, the level of intensity that I play with and just uh, having the guys around me that help me get one-on-ones as well as when I uh, pass through. All right, next we'll go over to Adam Kilgore from the Washington Post. Devin, um, uh, uh, presuming that your paths are going to cross with uh, Travis Kelsey a few times on Sunday, um, when you study him, what, what stands out uh, about him as a tight end compared to other guys you, you play against? Um, a lot stands out to me about Travis Kelsey. Um, when the ball is in his vicinity, his area, he going to get it. You know, uh, he's a hard he's a hard working player on the field. You know, last game when we played him, I had a couple of tackles on him, man. You know, it was just like, dang, man. Like he was like, we out here working. Like he had a he had a positive mindset, even though we was a I was the opponent. He just say, bro, you out here working. I'm out here working. Like this fun, like, and that's what I respect about him, man. I just respect how hard he worked to get open. You know, uh, when his quarterback scrambling, he's always the first outlet that he's looking for because he know he's a for sure catcher, and you know he's gonna find a way to get open. So, man, that's what I respect about his game. And him compared to other people, man, I don't know. I mean, right now, Travis Kelsey, he the best tight end in the game, if you ask me. But, I mean, that's just my opinion. And my opinion might not matter to some people, but that's just how I feel. All right, next we'll go over to Jack Rothborn. Hi, Devin. Uh, Jack from uh, The Independent in London. Um, pleasure to speak to you. Yes, sir. So, yeah, my question really, um, having spoken to you a couple of years ago um, of a draft, um, I wanted to get your thoughts on how your game as somebody who can be versatile for your team, both uh, rushing the, the passer, but also dropping back into coverage. How does your game match up against uh, Patrick Mahomes and what challenges does he pose to your game and what, what parts of his game match nicely with your game? Um, for us, that's being on, on two different sides of the ball. I think as um, far as my game is getting after him, he's a he's a dual quarterback, so he's very mobile. So if I was to ever, you know, pass rush against him and I get him in open field or if I just chase him, I'm a guy that can bring him down, you know, even with his elusiveness because, you know, I'm such, you know, I got such athleticism. 
rather when you got a D lineman chasing him and he just get away from him. So as far as pass rushing, that's what I feel where I'm great at and what he great at, but where I feel helps me. Not saying that I get him down every time because obviously he's going to be trying to make a play as well. And just when I'm in um, zone coverage, uh, when I'm in coverage period, you know, I'm able to run with all his tight ends and all his backs. And so I feel like, you know, um, I'm not just some guy he could just uh, pick on. So I feel like that I can contest all his uh, all his throws when they come into the guy that I'm in the vicinity of. And I mean, that's just uh, that's just a big ordeal for me, especially going against him. But he does a great job with his eyes and his body movement when he's getting ready to uh, pass the ball. Devin, just as an update for you, we got about 20 minutes left and we'll go over to Phil Jones. Hey, Devin, how you doing today? And congratulations on you making Super Bowl this year. Uh, going back to uh, Travis Kelsey, uh, I know that you play coverage, you play, you play zone coverage, but have you guys thought about trying to get physical with him at the uh, line of scrimmage to get him off his, uh, just, just get him off his route? I mean, we're going to do a little bit of everything. So we we got everything in. We got man zone, we, whatever coverage is in. It just all depends on how Ty Bo is feeling. But whatever he called, we're going to play it to the best of our ability. All right, next we will go over to Alex Fleming. How you doing, Mr. White? I'm doing great. Between you, Shaq Barrett, and Levante David, you arguably have the best – Linebacker core in the league. Last time you guys played this team, Clyde Edwards Hilaire was there, but Le'Veon Bell wasn't. And you saw Travis Kelsey run crazy on Tampa Bay Raymond James Stadium. It's up to you from your coach Larry Foote to say that the linebackers are the key to this game. Are you salivating seeing that Eric Fisher and Tardif aren't on the left side to protect Patrick Mahomes? And number two, What's the plan on getting pressure on Mahomes to try to slow this game down? Um, first of all, you add JPP to the conversation when you say Tampa Bay Buccaneers linebacker. Got to give the OG his respect because he he make everything go. Um, Le'Veon Bell did play in this game. Uh, Travis Kelsey, I don't know if he ran wild, but I think he had a cool 80 yards on us. I don't think he found the end zone. Uh so, yeah, that's that. But it really don't matter if uh, the starting tackles, the backup tackles, whoever playing, because at the end of the day, this is the NFL. So if you able to get out there on that field, that must mean the team got a lot of trust in you to do your job. So that really don't play a factor, because at the end of the day, we have to win our one-on-ones no matter who the matchup is with. And I think that's the thing. And you're playing for the Super Bowl, so – you don't take it light on nobody, whether it's the backup, the starter. You're going to try to whoop the man that's in front of you. And that's where Shaq and JPP come in, too. Whether um, it's so great to have Vita back to help push the pocket, him and Adama can sue in the middle. And I just feel like we don't – that that go your pressure right there. Like, we don't even have to do nothing for as blitz and stuff. Those four guys – going to have a mindset. They're going to have a job to do. And I feel like they're going to get after it all game long. But if Coach Bowles feel like we need to heat him up a little more, he have different things that he can um, interpret into the game within his defensive calls to get us going, to get us pressure we need if we can't get it with four. Our next, we'll go over to Harold Kuntz from Fox 4. Hey, Devin, I know you've been talking about the Chiefs offensive a lot, and you might have asked this before, but when it comes to Patrick Mahomes, just your impressions from that Week 12 game that you got from him, and was it kind of a little bit of a deer to headlights, if you will, moment when you saw it the first time with Tyree Kill going down the field, and now how do you guys try to change that to put it in your favor? I mean, I don't know. I guess we just came out um, doing some stuff that, that, that wasn't going to get us to win. But at the end of the day, that's why the game is played two 30-minute uh, halves. And we came back out in the second half, and we played a different game. But at the end of the day, we didn't get the job done. But like I said, we know we know what's our strengths, and we know what's our weaknesses. We know how we want to attack those guys. We got a good feeling on how we feel like they're going to attack us. So it's just about whoever execute. But, man, it's going to be a great game uh, for four quarters. All right, next we'll go over to Ron Snyder. Hey, Devin, Ron Snyder and Lafayette, miss seeing you on Mondays in the in the stadium. 
of those interviews. But anyway, I just wanted to ask you what it means to uh, have so many LSU players in this game. And, you know, just from the fans that kind of be kind of split in Baton Rouge and across the state. So what's your pitch to the, the LSU fans to root for your side of the LSU players? <laughs> um, man, it's great to have so many LSU guys playing in such a, a prestigious uh, game. You know, Super Bowl 55 is the top of the top. And that's just to let you know, man, we put our great players and with LSU players on the team, you know, the team going to have a good chance of being a good team. But uh, I say my pitch for all the LSU fans out there is to don't be selfish. Darrell Williams already got a championship last year. Ty Matthew already got a championship last year. And Clyde got an LSU championship last year. So y'all know it's your boy time. So go on root for your boy because it's my time to give me a championship. You dig? All right, next we'll go over to Adam Kilgore from the Washington Post. Um, the, the Bucks have uh, the most diverse coaching staff in the NFL. Um, I wonder uh, what does it mean for you um, to have a number of higher ranking assistant black, head, uh, black coaches when that's not really the norm in the NFL necessarily? And related to that, how does having, uh, you know, a, a diverse number of backgrounds on the staff, whether that's race, gender, age, how does that make the Bucks a better team? Oh, man, that, that man, that's one of the best things I ever seen since I've been in the NFL. And it was something I noticed, you know, last year, but nobody really spoke on it because, I mean, all what's going on in the world right now wasn't going on. But, man, it just let me know what type of leadership we got from the Glazer family to Jason Light to the head coach, Bruce Aarons. It just let me know what type of people they are in general. You know, they don't care who you are, what color you are, you know, what gender you are. They going to put great people around because if you put great people around, it's just, man, it's it's contagious. Like everybody feed off one another. And, and people might think like, oh, they got women on the staff, but they just own there just to say they own there. I learn from Coach Lowe every day. Coach Lowe is our D-line, D-lineman assistant coach, and she's always out there working those guys. And if I – like sometimes I need help on something, she's always willing to help me. She keep good spirits at practice. And then you got MJ. MJ is a person that's like – that's one of the main reasons why my body feels so good going out there. She stretches everybody. She gives everybody new techniques on things to do. So I feel like they all play a huge role – in the, in the success that we are having. And I'm so thankful for them to be on our staff because they are great people off the field. And that's what it means the most. And like I said, you know, just having different people, like, you know, diverse, I feel like it's just, it's a blessing because everybody deserves the opportunity. And BA giving them that opportunity, Jason Light giving them that opportunity, the Glazer family giving them that opportunity. And they gave me an opportunity. So I'm just thankful to be here. All right, now we'll go over to Silas' st uh, stage. Hi, Devin. Appreciate the time. Um, you you mentioned it yourself that you could be the guy to bring uh, to bring the homes down with your athleticism. Are you preparing any different for Sunday than any other game to uh, to get the best possibility? Now nah, I'm keeping the main thing the main thing. What I've been doing all season long, like we in week 21 now. What I've been doing all season long has been working for me. You know, I'm extremely blessed. Uh, I put a lot of work in, man. That's one thing that I pride myself on is you get out what you put in. And my work ethic hasn't changed from training camp all the way into week 21 preparing for the Super Bowl. I mean, the other, uh, the only thing that I wish is that we didn't have this bye week because, like, I'm so ready to play. Uh, obviously, I missed the, the last game of the season, the first playoff game, so I kind of got two bye weeks already. It's like, man, once I got back in the rhythm, it's like, let's go, let's go. But at practice, man, practice been looking like games for me. I've been flying around, uh, talking, uh, making plays, uh, keeping my energy up with my defensive guys, talking trash to the offensive guys. So just to keep myself in that, in that same mental mind frame that I've been in in the playoffs, and it's been working. So, I mean, I'm just keeping the same routine, just getting live every day. Our next up will be Rob Romerschauser. Hi, my name is Rob. It's great to see you, Devin. I'm a big LSU fan. And um, I wanted to ask you about Leonard Fournette since you were teammates with him. I mean, well, the same school. And he was down at a low point in his career. 
until he became a Bucks. Um, have you ever tried to help him, like mentor, that he can do this again in the NFL as he did before? Yo, I mean, Little Fournette, man. Shout out to my guy, Bugger Nation, you know. Like he say, being united generates attitude, man. And I think the best thing was for us to reunite. You know, when I was in uh, college, I was a freshman, he was a junior. He took me under his wing. And man, it was great. We hit it off from the very first day. He's been a great mentor to me. And, you know, when he hit the league, you know, they had success early in Jacksonville. They was a real good team. You know, I remember them losing in the AFC Championship to Tom Brady and, and uh, the Patriots. And then, you know, things started not going the way he wanted to go. But at the end of the day, you know, it's not about, like, how you start. It's always about how you finish. It's always about finding yourself and doing the right things for yourself. And the moment that I seen Jacksonville release him, they cut him. I was on the phone with him. I was on the phone with B.A. I was like, man, we have to get him. He's going to be a tremendous help for this football team. And weeks later, look what he's doing for our football team. Like, he could be the one of the best backs always in the lead when he's on his A game. And I feel like from here on out, it's nothing. This the Leonard that we're going to get from here on out, man. He's rejuvenated. You know, whatever he had going, that's the pass. He got it behind him. And, man, it's been a blessing to play with him. I'm so glad we reunited. And I just hope me and him, can, you know, we can finish this uh, finish this job that we got going and pull it out. It'll, it'll mean so much to me, you know, especially for when me and him started and where me and him at now, man. You know, uh, just all those 7.30 a.m. workouts, man, just whatever we put in, him being the number four pick, me being the number five pick, man, it's just such a blessing to be able to uh, fight for a Super Bowl. All right, now we'll go over to Steve Isbitz. Hey, Devin, uh, on this defense, can you name a guy that maybe fans don't know about or even if they do know about him that you're extra proud of just for all the hard work behind the scenes, the development, uh, somebody who's just had a special year that fans may not realize? Uh, I'd say that number one person on our defense would have to be – man, that's a lot of guys I can get at too. But i say – first I'm going to say uh, Nacho uh, – he, he filled in tremendously for Vita. And it might not always show up on the stat sheet, but he been getting it on all year. And I'm very thankful for my guy, man. You know, I don't feel like we took a step back when we lost Vita. I feel like he was still the same impact guy. I feel like he held up in the uh, run game. You know, whatever we called on him to do, he did it. So I, I got to give it to my guy, Nacho, Big 56. And another guy, uh, Jamel Dean. Jamel Dean. Jamel also didn't play against the Chiefs last time, so we our lineup was kind of crazy. Uh, he's been a guy, man. He he's made a lot of plays and he's held a lot of fast guys for us. You know, Jamel Dean is a four three zero guy that's long and rangy, and uh, he's been a tremendous uh, help to this team as well. And he's just a guy that's not getting a lot of the hype, a lot of the uh, hype behind him, but he's a guy that's. Without him, you know, we wouldn't be in these positions. Just like the Green Bay game, he turned that game around for us uh, up in week 12. But he's been the guy that's been playing great ball for us as well. All right, we got about seven minutes left. Next up, we'll go to Rachel Hallowell. Hey, Devin, how's it going? It's going great. Great. So I'm with the NFL Canada, and the Canadians were just wondering what your favorite thing is about Canada. Oh. Man, probably how tough they are over there. I say uh, that that's probably uh, something that stands out when you say Canada is a, is the toughness over there, and you know that's kind of a big thing for me over here. Like you know, it's always the person with the most heart is that's the person who's going to win the one on ones, and that's what it's all about, especially playing in the NFL. And I always say before the game, you gotta break, you gotta break the man across from you will, you gotta break his will. And I feel like that's something that Canada exemplifies. It's toughness. Cool, thank you. You're welcome. All right, next we will go over to uh, Leo Haggerty. Devin, I had a chance before the last time the Bucks were in the Super Bowl to ask Warren Sapp before the game. Tell me one word that would describe winning the Super Bowl for you. He said immortality. What would be your one word answer and why? Oh, uh, man. Hey, I never, I never had to answer a question like this before. 
my one word that would describe winning the Super Bowl, I just say a blessing. I just say a blessing because, I mean, not every day that, you know, you get this opportunity, let alone to win it. You know, and I always pick it back off Levante, like him being in the league eight years without making it to the playoffs, let alone getting to the Super Bowl. So, I mean, I just, man, I just thank the man above uh, for allowing me to be put in the situation to win the game and just thank him for allowing my team to come out victorious. So I just say a blessing. Well, it's a blessing either way because I'm doing something I love, but it'll be a real huge blessing to win it. Our next, we'll go over to Kalen Jones from the ringer. Hey, Devin, how are you doing? Great. Um, I know that you you yourself, you know, you're early on in your career. Um, I'm sorry if you've already been asked this, but, you know, you've got a bunch of young secondary dudes playing behind you. How much have you seen, you know, those players come together this season and particularly this postseason? Oh, man. So I give a lot of credit to those guys, man, especially because those guys never really had nobody to lean on. The oldest guy in the secondary is like in his third year. So that, that's that's kind of hard, you know, especially playing in the NFL and you're not having a bet to lean on. But, man, those guys getting, getting it done. Every time they ask to, they step up to the challenge and they get it done. They've been criticized so much, you know, but they always come to work. They always, you know, get out there on that field and they give it they all. And, I mean, that's all I can ask for because they know I'm going to give my all and they get their all. And I know at the end, you know, we're some talented young guys. And I know we making plays. We're going to be a big reason why we win uh, win this game, win any game that we play. All right, now we'll go over to Sarah Walsh. Hey, Devin, I was just listening to Shaq, and he talked about this Super Bowl uh, team – doesn't have a lot of guys with Super Bowl experience on it, but it never felt that way. He said, even, you know, that first playoff game you guys had, it, it feels like the guys with no experience have experience. How do you guys have that mentality where you sort of have that edge, but without coming off as, as arrogant, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I feel like it's confidence and it's swagger. A lot of people in the league don't have a, uh, a Super Bowl experience. Like, this is not just some game you just walk into. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, when you're a baller, it shows. When you out there having fun, it shows. I think that's the biggest thing about us where it's not aggress, it's having fun. Especially, like, with us being so young on the back end, we out there, we got handshake for days. We always turned over one another. My coach always tell me, sit down on the sideline when I'm trying to watch watch the offense and tell me the rest. I'm like, man, I'm young. Like, I don't need to sit down. Like, I'm I'm on my second win already. I'm, it's time to go. Like, you know, i sit down tomorrow once this game over. But that's just the mindset that we have. And, man, it's fun going out there playing with the whole entire team, you know, especially the defense. You know, it's always fun when we out there, man, especially in that run game, we out there handling people. But it, it's fun. All right, next we will go over to Sam McEwen. Hey, Devin, um, I, I had a question about Levante. Now, you've probably already been asked a question, but I'm curious. I mean, your personality and his personality, he's kind of low-key. Um, you have just – it just, you know, the, the excitement and exuberance just comes off of you. I'm curious what what he's kind of – how he's taking you under his wing a little bit, like your relationship, your personalities, and how they work together. Um, our personalities, they don't match at all. right. Uh, he he's so laid back like he he don't even like he don't even like being in the spotlight none of that like he just like buy this business let his business show and get on about his business but me i'm young not dumb full of energy and just love it love to have fun love to be out there playing the game and um i mean it's been great you know just i mean he and, you know he done taught me a lot or uh, still teaching me a lot and I'm teaching him some too, you know, especially like it's always uh, that that mentality, like beat me to the ball, make uh, get more tackles than me. Let's see who can come up with the biggest play first. You know, that whoever come up with the biggest play, that person got to pay the other person $1,000. Just little stuff that I'm able to uh, throw into our game to make it more interesting as well. But, man, from the, the uh, classroom to off the field, taking care of yourself, you know, taking care of your body, making sure you're available for every game. And he done taught me a lot, and I can't thank him enough. All right, last question. We're going to go to Jenna Lane from ESPN. Hey, Devin, great to see you. 
I'm just wondering, have you worked out any sort of arrangement with the, with the staff at Raymond James Stadium? Because I know that you said that, that being able to bring your horse to the stadium at LSU was, was the highlight of your time there. Has there been any sort of, of deal perhaps made with the stadium staff here that, that if you guys can get a W, you'll be able to do that? Man, we get a W on because what they say, I'm pulling the horse out and I'm going to hold a Lombardi trophy and I'm going to ride around the whole stadium. They can <laughs> keep me out. They can do whatever they want to do. But guess what? I'm going to be on top of the world. Which horse are you going to bring with you? A uh, dream. All right, that's all we got time for today. Appreciate it, Devin. Thank you. Good luck. Dude!